الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد. Welcome back. We're talking about how and when a man loves a woman. There's this whole famous incident of Ali رضي الله عنه الله, the close family member of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, who was destined to become the fourth Imam, the fourth Khalifa for our Muslim Ummah. Wherein Ali walked home, came home one day. It's in his private residence, no one's around. And he knocks on the door, comes in, and he sees his wife, Fatima, radiallahu anha, the honored daughter of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, al Zahra, brushing her teeth. It's not the most attractive scene, right? Walks in, Fatima's brushing her teeth. And Ali, he explodes in poetry. You know, the, the, the Arab men are you know overflowing with poetry, right? All of a sudden he says, Ya al Araki Kaifa Araka. O twig of the siwak of the Eric tree, how can I see you in this embrace? If you were a man, I would have killed you. Touching my wife like that. Kissing my wife, right? He's talking to this to this tweet. Where does Ali radiallahu anhu, you know, come up with this stuff? You can't find you cannot find this kind of stuff in Hollywood. This kind of romance stuff. His wife's brushing his teeth, he comes in with poetry. Not even Shakespeare's come up with this stuff, right? This is Ali radiallahu anhu, the one who when you look and read his biography, he was the one who was an enforcer for the Prophet Muhammad. He was the one who was the first in battle. He was the one of strength who rips the door of a fortress by the power granted to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that battle. Ali, who was given nasr by Allah, and yet he was soft. Where did Ali radiallahu anhu learn this? In the house of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day, Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu this is just after he's become Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ, he's just been Muslim a few months, Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu, after having been the one who pursued the believers to Ethiopia, he wanted their death, he wanted to ransom them. After all of these things that you would say, these are major sins, he accepts faith, he comes to the Prophet, and a couple of months later, the Prophet makes him in charge of a battalion and sends him out. Amr al thought, wow, the Prophet must really love me, sallallahu alayhi wa Why else would he choose me? There's Umar, there's Ali, there's all these other Sahaba. Surely the Prophet has love for me. So he asked the Prophet, sallallahu a sneaky question. He says to him, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu in front of the Sahaba, he says, Man to him, who do you love? The Prophet, sallallahu says, Aisha, my wife Aisha. Ooh. Wow. A husband talking about his love for his wife in public? Yes, this is our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu Who do you love? Aisha. So Amr al sits down. He thought the Prophet would say, I love you. You're a good man. That's why I chose you, right? But he didn't get that answer. So he comes back later and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I don't mean yani, your wife. I'm talking about yani, min al -rijal, from men. So the Prophet says, Abuha, her father. And it's almost with that statement, the Prophet doesn't even say Abu Bakr. He says her father, meaning who's on his mind? Aisha. This is our Prophet Muhammad. Numerous moments and examples from his life that show you how he loved. <laughs> His spouse was not just internal, but it was a public display to teach you and I the mannerism of conducting our home life. So you find in one of the battles, and the hadith is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, and there's narrations and variations in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ had the habit of taking one or some of his wives with him on a journey, especially a long journey. And this was an arduous trip, and it was in the middle of the summer. And therefore, in Arabic culture, and due to the necessity of the environment, 
when you are in enemy territory, you travel by night because it's cooler and it's dark. You put out the fires, your enemy doesn't know where you are, and you camp by day. And as night came, the Muslim army gathered its belongings, put up their tents, everyone got onto their camels, and Aisha at that very sensitive moment, she says, Ya Rasulullah I've lost my necklace. Now the brothers, you and I would say, it's okay, I'll get you another one. That's if it's, you know, something pricey, something she, you would care about. But it wasn't gold, wasn't silver, it was a string necklace with black beads. Not, I mean, not worth, worth much, something simple. And the Prophet ﷺ says to the whole army, Stop. Put down your belongings. Aisha, she went over there somewhere. She lost her necklace. Can you help her find it? Can you imagine this? Umar ibn Khattab bent over in the dark in the desert <laughs> looking for a black string necklace. Can you imagine, you know, the Sahaba, these major important historical figures in our life looking, combing the desert for a black string necklace in the darkness of the night. Even more so, they had expended all their water. So they began to talk as the night proceeded. If we don't leave soon, we don't have water. Fajr is going to come. Either we drink or make wudu. If we drink, we will live. And then we can't pray. Up to that moment, Tayammu had not been revealed. Everyone's, what are we going to do? And they're whispering to each other. And the Prophet is in his room with Aisha. And Abu Bakr comes, you know, her father comes in and he gives it to her. How could you do this? This is Umar, man. Walking in the desert looking for you. What's wrong with you? How could you make this? It's a necklace. I will get you one. You don't even have to tell the Prophet Why do you cause all this trouble? And he continued and he continued and he continued. And Aisha says, I didn't say a word because I didn't want to disturb the Prophet who had his head in my lap. I was holding his head up. He was taking a nap وسلم, from his tahajjud prayers. I didn't want to make any noise or make any movement, even though it pained me to hear my father speak to me this way. They didn't find it. Fajr is soon to come. Everyone's nervous. And all of a sudden, Allah reveals verses to the Prophet Muhammad If you have not any source of water, make tayammu. All of a sudden, the Muslim army, Allahu Akbar, Aisha is always bringing us good things. <laughs> the one they were all just, you know, just a couple of minutes ago, Aisha, Aisha, radiallahu anha wa allaha, Aisha. And her father, they are always the source of all good things for our ummah. Because now you and I have been given this facilitation due to a moment of what? Love. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi inconvenienced a whole army because of his spouse, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No, I'm not going to go to dinner. No, I can't work late. No, I need to leave early. No, my wife has a special occasion. That moment, that decision you make is sunnah. It is the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu It is the example of the best man who loved his wife Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can inconvenience the distant because you love the near. This is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Like it who likes it. Even her father didn't like it. Her father wouldn't have done what her husband did, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are moments that we find and we record within our life as a higher standard of etiquette between husband and wife. At the same time, you find that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was also. Uh, you know, when we, when we learn his sunnah and it's taught to us at times in ta'aleem and in classes, we're taught about the fiqh. Many of you may not have heard this hadith before. 
You might have heard about how to make tayammu. I'm sure I can ask all the sisters, all the brothers, how do you make tayammu? You say, brother, you touch the ground, it has to be natural ground, it should be something. You know the fifth. But you don't know why the fifth. And the why is actually the greater part of the sunnah. The greater part. How many times have you used tayammum and kiyam? It's raining all the time. Yes. <laughs> right? How often are you going to use tayammum? Once in your life? Twice in your life? But how often do you need that example of the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad's love for his spouse? And as such, there has to be a rethinking of our understanding and the teachings that relate to the, uh, the, uh, the acceptance of the sunnah of the Messenger Muhammad Another quick example before we have a short break. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with Aisha عنها, was always uh, a good communicator. And that method of communication was not simply limited to words or commands. It's not do this, come here, stay away, don't. The communication of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was so apt and so precise that even by the look in his eye, it could quell her, it could calm her, it could change her normal course of behavior and action. Such as in the famous incident also reported in the Sahih, an old woman came to Aisha as she's sitting beside the Prophet So she's sitting, you know, she feels special. I'm the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu And this old woman comes, she do, we don't know her name. And she begins to say rude things to Aisha. Sabbat Aisha, cursed her. And Aisha was, you know Aisha, Allah Anna. She was capable, she can defend herself eloquently. And she says, before I spoke, I looked to the face of my husband, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the Messenger of Allah, وَرَأَيْتَ فِي وَجْهِ أَنَّهُ يَغْضَى And I saw in his face, if I defended myself, although I am right to defend myself, that if I did in his face, I could see he would be upset with me. The second, it was quiet. <laughs> that, this old woman went away, came back for more, second round. She cursed me. I looked to the Prophet and I see in his face, leave her. She goes away, comes back again. Round three. Three strikes, you're out. Finish. I looked to the face of the Prophet and I saw that it's okay now. She deserves it. From Tasarat, I crushed her. I defended myself with truth. Now that example of the relationship of the Prophet ﷺ and his wife where the eyes can speak more than words is an example we read in our home. How often is it that misunderstandings in words happen, let alone in behavior? The Prophet ﷺ sets that example where not just how he spoke, but the demeanor of his body, how he reflected his uh, happiness, his sorrow, was something that became intimate between him and his wife, him and those he loved. People learned of his happiness from his face. They said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that when he was in a state of happiness, when he was happy, it was like you saw a full moon. You could look up in the sky and say, wow, look at that, beaming. And when he was upset, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you could see that his face would darken, you knew not to encroach upon that action. So these are two quick examples of the Prophet ﷺ with Aisha anha. After this short break, we will look at some of his habits and how he showed love to others from the wives of his blessed household and family Wasallam. I ask you to join us again shortly, inshaAllah.